Hey, good morning everybody. Good afternoon and good evening as well. You know, I have been talking about this for a while now. Reptiles are smarter than we give them credit for. They are a lot smarter than we give, even that I gave them credit for. We learn so much about that. Take for instance Matilda here, right? We just put this door in just a couple weeks ago. Now granted, we did this new wall just a couple days ago, but we put a door in about a week and a half ago. One day, I opened that door, she walked out every day since. As soon as she sees me over by the door, she comes right up to the door and I have to open the door to let her out. Now, before that, for over a year and a half, she was in a place without a door. One day, she remembered that that door opened and she knows now that's how she gets out of here. That is memory. That is cognitive thinking. That is more intelligent than most people give reptiles credit for. Let's, you know, let's, let's go look at Speedy and see what he does. For those of you that don't know, Speedy actually spends his time at BHB during the winter time. Now the interesting thing about the smarts of this animal is that he loves to come up into the offices and that's why this keep door shut sign is there is because Speedy will always come up into the offices. So if he hears the door actually click, he knows he can't get up front. But if you leave the door just open a little bit or don't click it, within no time he actually comes inside that door. It's the craziest thing, like he understands the click of the door or the not click of the door means that he can push his way through. So let's just go ahead, now Speedy's on the move. Let's just go ahead and walk in the office. Again, we won't shut it all the way because we're gonna wanna see if he comes in. Again, if I were to click it, he would absolutely stay away. If I just leave it open just a little bit, let's see if he comes in, because he loves to explore the offices. <laughs> and here he comes. <laughs> Speedy, what are you doing? Speedy, what do you got going on? What are you doing, Speedy? And here comes the door. It's crazy. Again, he knows that if I don't last the door, that he can get himself in. He can push his way through. That's intelligence, right? And he'll do this every time, no matter where he's at in the outside. If I don't lock that door when I come and push it all the way, the keep the door shut sign is so that we last it all the way. If I don't do that, he will every time come in and then walk around the offices. That tells you there's an intelligence to tortoises, to reptiles, that people don't give him credit for. Again, he understands the noise of the lock of the door, and that is how he actually determines if he can get in or not. If I were to shut this door and last bit, he would never even come to that door and try to push through. That tells me that reptiles are super, super smart. So again, what we want RJ to do is station, open his mouth. Come on, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Up, 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 up. Open, there it is, there it is. That's what I want. It's a work in progress, so we have to just continue to work on RJ, right? So we understand he's gonna get more food if he stations. Open, 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 open. There you go. There you go, RJ. Now he's starting to get it. Again, it's just gonna take repetition time and time again to do the same thing over. So open, 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 there you go. And as he gets used to it, because again, he's been used his whole life me handing him food. So it's just gonna take time, but you can start to see he's already processing it, and in no time he's gonna actually be in a position where he'll always just come up, open his mouth station, and then people, when we have him on display with the Reptarium, can just throw food into his mouth, kind of like they do at Gatorland. So uh, things are coming along pretty well. I know that it's not a reptile, but of course, Drogo the sloth here, we need to train too. Eventually we're gonna have encounters uh, when we can have him on display, and we want people to be able to feed him potentially too. So Jay is just over here, he's just kind of, you know, touching him for a second. Now he's gonna offer him a, a little sweet potato. And what we wanna do is see if we can get Drogo to come out of his hammock or wherever he's at and train him so that every time, you can see he's trying to cheat. He's like, oh, I just wanna come over here, come on. Again, this will be a training thing. And if he gets used to it, when he knows he's gonna get it, he'll come out. And that way when people are doing the sloth encounters where they might feed him, uh, they'll actually get a close up encounter with him. This is just gonna take time because he had never done this in the past. So Wonderful. it's just like a reptile. You have to train him, right? It's little training steps the fact that he's realizing he's getting fed by even coming out of the hammock at all is a start right look at that cute little tongue 
and then ultimately we'll get him to climb out on a limb and stuff like that. And we may even have like a specific limb that he needs to climb to eventually. So this is the very start of a kind of training with him. So again, we, uh, you know, we're doing the same with reptiles. He's a mammal. Everyone expects mammals to be a little bit more intelligent. I don't feel that way. The more I work with these animals, the more I realize reptiles are really just as smart as most mammals. But, uh, but we have to train him just like these other guys and he is absolutely adorable. I've been on a mission most of my life to really just get people to love these animals because I love them so much. But recently, I'm even on another mission, which is to get people to think that these reptiles are more intelligent than we thought in the past. I have personally changed my opinion of reptiles. I've always thought that they were intelligent in a way, like a predator, kind of real instinctual. Now I'm realizing they think, and we're starting to prove that they think, and they remember, and there's cognitive behavior there. That's pretty amazing, and I want everyone to kind of change it. When people come to the Reptarium, I think that happens a lot. They walk in with one perception, and they leave with a complete completely different perception and I'm trying to do the exact same thing with this vlog. As you guys know by now if you're watching the vlog that I am deep in the breeding season. Well not deep, we're about three weeks in but uh, I'm not going to do a big ultrasound yet. I think that we're probably at least two weeks away from it because quite frankly it doesn't matter right now. I'm expecting everything to be about 10 or 12 millimeters but I'm going to do just a spot one and I do this in the beginning of the season a lot and what I mean by that is I'm going to pick maybe like three or four females that have been feeding well, maybe gotten bred and uh, just see where we're at to get an idea are we at 10 or 12 millimeters or are we at 15 millimeters and then in about two weeks I'll ultrasound every single female get that baseline and then we can start judging as they're growing right so uh, let's just hit a couple females and see where we're at in this season And basically, just like I expected, we had uh, the lowest female was 10 millimeters, the biggest female was 13 millimeters, only ultrasound a few animals. So if I went through everything, I'm sure I'd find some that are under 10, I'd find some that are probably over 15, but I just wanted to get a baseline of animals. And I picked three animals that had been bred and have consistently been feeding. So I'm sure the animals that haven't been bred and maybe are off of food might even be lower. So uh, anyways, that's exactly what I expected. I'll do this maybe every week for the next couple weeks, and then we'll do a complete ultrasound to see where we're at as far as follicular growth in females. Remember yesterday we actually saw that the Deadpool babies were starting to hatch out, so what do we have? Well, this is the second one starting this to hatch This is the second out one starting to hatch? Yeah. Did the first one already hatch? Yeah. So oh my gosh. Thing get to see this little guy. So this baby just hatched out. Again, Deadpool line from Tiki's Gecko, that really red gargoyle gecko that's absolutely beautiful. And you can see as babies, they're not so red, right? They've no, got that dark color. No, it definitely develops. <laughs> yeah, but absolutely incredible. A lot of times I've seen that, like, it seems like the more chocolatey they look as babies, that turns that red. That's so oh, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, that That is going to be an absolute ripper. And we got another little Deadpool. How exciting. Mm -hmm. And then I want to update you guys, because I'll be totally honest with you, I haven't seen the Deadpool ones that hatched like a month and a half ago. I haven't even seen them yet so I want to see what they look like oh you can start to see they're good. coloring up already yeah. so again as they get older you can see that chocolate turns to that reddish color and again this is number one probably not fired up very much number one and number two it's gonna get much more red as it gets oh, older yeah. right oh yeah so this one's only like a couple months old so couple months definitely get more more saturation in there yeah that Deadpool line is just some of the most gorgeous of the red gargoyle gecko so super excited that we're finally producing them Heck yeah it's awesome. the next year oh my god I have some really good males coming really? up so we'll they'll look even better even the better next season yeah. that is awesome and by then we'll have that new caledonia room i promise you that yeah, i promise you that the first little guy that has out he's actually a little smaller than that second one interesting yeah, and you can again start to see the kind of pink and the red mm -hmm. starting to brighten up again here in another six months it's going to be crazy you can definitely tell though with these ones like uh the stripes on them they're much more like uh crisp and clean right. yeah beautiful um, line so yeah definitely so going to be very colorful awesome cannot wait till these guys get to adult you know we're always continuously training different things here at the zoo you know you got to remember tiana here of course the lewis eye hybrid was terrified of people not too long ago and we've trained her to kind of be really chill now we're trying 
trying to get her to the point where we can take her out like this. You know, it'd be great if people could actually hold her. You can see how she's come a long way. Before she was freaked out. I mean, if you even touched her, she would go running. Now we're actually able to put her on her shoulders and, uh, and she's actually hanging out. Again, just kind of doing different things, right? Like Diddy and Dixie are on the ground. You can touch them, you can pet them. They'll come up and eat superworms out of your hands and stuff like that. Of course, Bella is in the cage. She loves pets, but she doesn't like to be picked up. So Tiana, we want to get to a point just like this where people could actually put her on their shoulders and she'll just chill out and get pets and stuff like that. So again, these are just little threads of kind of trust that we're building with these animals, right? When she realizes like going on someone's shoulder means she's getting pets and attention and she seems to really love that, it's a good thing, right? And so we're instilling that kind of training into her to eventually be able to let other people do it. Right now, we're only doing it. We're not allowing our patrons to do it yet. But as she's getting better and better, I could definitely see here in the next weeks or maybe months that people are going to be able to do this and what a great experience that will be. So Laura, I want to show you two things and I want to get your reactions to. First off, I want to show you Matilda's new wall. All right. So I know you were out of town. What do you think? Do you think it looks good or is it a mess? Should I go back to the old one? Can we start over? Again? <laughs> yeah. Do you no, like the height? Is yes. the height a little bit better too, or? Uh, yeah, I think it'll be good for the kids. Okay. You know, do you for think some Matilda of the kids. can look over. Uh, oh, you know, don't be surprised if she at least like climbs up it and does it because oh. she was already trying to climb up the other one, so I this know. one is shorter. And then I want to show you these over here. The new turtle pond. Oh my goodness, look at all of them. Aren't they cute? <laughs> Aren't they adorable? Look at how they like climb up the walls and... That is crazy. Did you think they were going to do that? Um, I had no the idea they were going to climb up the walls like that. That's no idea. Crazy. <laughs> but they're all alright. Look at this lonely yeah. guy over here. And... Oh, that's awesome. Kids are going to love it, yes, huh? Yes, the kids are going to love it. I, I put this in here too. Just this little... Oh yeah, perfect. It what do you think? It's like a little log. <laughs> it's like a boat. Uh oh. Uh oh. Under the water. I can't. It got burned. <laughs> so every time I'm, I see Jay, all you're doing is dressing this up for Yeah, straight up, all he does. Yeah. Do yeah. you do anything else other than dress up for No, this is my job title. Yeah, yeah job title. And Noah's probably. I film it. You yeah, film it. That's it. So, uh, so yeah, the so dynamic can duo. Can we this on your vlog then? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> so he just films it. He no. doesn't put it out. Yeah. Yeah. We don't do anything with it. Yeah, he's just, he's just looking okay. like he's right. right. working. All right, right. good, good, good. Uh, but it is very cute. It is cute. Franklin, you look beautiful. Very festive. I wanted to give you a little update on that bill from Michigan. Remember the proposal? bill that is the HR 6544 that basically would really inhibit a lot of people being able to keep reptiles here so first off I want to thank everyone that has sent in emails letters phone calls all that stuff again I'm going to put a link in the description to all that information if you want to remember to be very very cordial and kind there's no reason to be uh, upset I realize it stinks but it is what it is but you got to remember there's 11 people on the committee one of which actually is proposing this right so he's already kind of thinking that he wants this to be passed but there's 10 people that probably don't have a lot of opinion on it and most of these committees are literally going to get you know less than a dozen people are ever going to contact them about what they feel about a proposed law that's going through their committee especially the committee of agriculture right so when we get hundreds maybe thousands of people reaching out to these committee members in a nice and cordial way it really can influence it and kill it in the actual committee itself. So we've already sent letters and emails and calls. I'm trying to set up Zoom meetings with everyone on the committee to try to talk to them as well. I just encourage you to do the exact same thing. So anyways, thank you for helping us here in Michigan because again, if it passes in Michigan, it could take this law and pass it across the country. So we want to kill it as quickly as we can. So you guys are doing a great job. Continue the good work. I'm going to continue what I can do and I'll keep you guys updated. So let's just keep uh, working away as a community. We're going to be able to beat this. And again, like I said, reptiles are absolutely intelligent. It's amazing. I get blown away by these guys all the time. I hope that you enjoyed it today. If you did, do me a favor, right over here, hit this playlist. Could you do me another favor? My podcast channel right up here. Subscribe to that for me. I hope that you're subscribed to this vlog channel on this side. If you're not, hit that subscription button. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.